What is going on, Thumb Thumbs? This is Thumb Brother 2 bringing you guys another LDL post commentary video for week 8. No, week. Yeah, week 8 of the LDL. I am your coach for the Salt Lake City Swamperts, and we are facing Matt and the Winnipeg Jellicent this week. Uh, Matt is a really good, good friend of mine. Um, you know, I love him to death, and we we usually do team build a lot together. So to go up against him this week is extremely scary and extremely fun. Uh, but as you guys do see on the screen, we have our squad that I went over uh, in depth in the team prep video. So if you guys did miss that, definitely make sure that you uh, go back and you watch that. Uh, as I do go over my team and also Matt's potential Pokemon and what he could bring and as far as what he could have brought um, I was the most thing I was shocked about as you guys do see he brought the Sableye which I wasn't expecting the Terrakion I more so expected the Cryogonal I for sure wasn't expecting which was crazy the Blastoise the Victini for sure I knew was coming and then the Thunderous so let's go ahead and jump into this uh, battle uh, as you guys do see, it was a absolutely wild battle, and this was a fun battle for sure. So going into this battle, uh, I wasn't really like 100% sure of who to lead off with. So my safe lead is always usually going to be Walnut or just our fortress. I nickname it a different nut every week. If you guys haven't caught on yet, and he sends in Dead Man, his Mega Sableye, which um, you know I knew was going to have the magic bounce. So I immediately just went ahead and swapped out, expecting a will o -Wisp to come out, and I decided if this is where I'm going to burn my Lumberry, this is a perfect opportunity, because no one else really wants to take a, uh, a will o -Wisp. I know Entei could have, but then Entei couldn't have really done anything to the uh, Mega Sableye, so I went ahead and I took the will o -Wisp this turn one, which is really unfortunate because, uh, you know, Lumberry would have been nice for later in the battle, but we're Lumberry now. We cure our we cure our burn, and this next round I'm gonna go ahead and knowing that the Will O Wisp is gonna come again, I'm gonna go ahead and just start setting up on this uh this Sableye, trying to get my attack as high as possible before it actually goes before I actually go on the offensive because with the plus two in the Will O Wisp, I'm basically back to a, a zero uh, attack like a plus zero attack boost. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and actually uh, go for the knockoff, if I'm not mistaken, as he goes ahead and... S no, I go for the Icicle Crash, actually. Uh, no, I actually go for another Sword Sense. That's right. Hello. I wanted to... Like I said, I wanted to be as strong as I could against this thing. I can't remember. My bad. I have terrible memory. So I'm at uh, plus four, but I'm technically plus two, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so I go for the Icicle Crash, praying that this uh, Trachean wasn't Scarf. And I do get the Ice Gold Crash off, and we see how much damage that does. We do about 75% to it. We don't get the flinch, unfortunately, this week like we did against Prez last week. But uh, Trackhand's going to come out and Rock Slide our uh, Weavile away. So I know this thing's not Scarred, which is really nice, which means Joey G Galaxy can come in here and actually just click Thunderbolts on anything that comes in, and we will do decent damage to. So uh, Matt automatically switches out into his Mega Sableye now. Uh, the Thunderbolt's gonna come off, and once again, ladies and gentlemen, on the switch, like what happened with Arthur, it happened to Matt once again. We get the Paralysis off, and I feel really bad, actually, for this Paralysis, because Matt's had just a lot of issues with, uh, hacks and crits against his Mega Sableye the past few weeks, so Matt, if you're watching, buddy, I do apologize, but looking at the damage that Thunderbolt can do, I, I'm like, I can, I can play this stall game, I just gotta continuously click uh, Thunderbolt just to guarantee just until he gets paralyzed and fortunately enough for me it happens this turn right here and so this next turn I'm actually able to pick up the knockout on this Mega Sableye as he goes ahead and leaves it in this was actually a very very close roll uh, but we ended up getting the nice the nice uh, mid to high roll and the one of his biggest walls is gone which I'm super happy about so now his thunderous comes in and I am super scared ladies and gentlemen so I'm gonna go ahead and swap out because that Joey because that Joey Galaxy outspeeds our Joey Galaxy and so I'm gonna go ahead and send out Walnut as he can really eat up anything he wants to and he actually goes for the agility and I honestly thought at this point we were done because the, the move set that Thunderous can have is actually crazy but he actually misclicks here and he goes for the sludge wave by accident Matt, I'm so sorry that you misclicked there, buddy. Uh, it happened to me as well against Arthur. But I go ahead and I actually get up the Stealth Rocks as he goes for the Hidden Power Fire. He came prepared this week. 
uh, gets the knock, uh, uh, not the knockout, but he brings us all the way down to the sturdy. And I actually go for the gyro ball, getting off good damage against him because we are sassy, negative speed nature, zero IVs. So we do a good chunk of damage to that thunderous, which is really, really nice. Uh, this next turn, actually, though, Meta's uh, going to go ahead and swap out directly into that Blastoise wanting to rapid spin as I go for another, I believe I went for a hidden power. Yeah, I believe I went, I hit the hidden power eyes to potentially, I, I think just for the lulls. I don't know, I think I just clicked the move there. Uh, but knowing that this Blastoise was going to rapid spin and I'm a still bug type, I can pretty much kind of stay on the field. I didn't want rocks to go away. So as you guys see on this next turn coming up, Matt's going to go and rapid spin the rocks. And I am going to just set the rocks back up. I mean, it, it's just that it's just that cut and paste kind of thing there. So after the rocks are set up, uh, I wasn't expect I was really expecting him to kind of swap or kind of just finish off, uh, finish off my ch my uh, what's it called my fortress, and then rapid spin afterwards. But Matt actually makes an interesting play here as uh, he actually goes for move. I I forget that uh, Blastoise can get sometimes. He actually. Uh, after I get this gyro ball off for a little bit more damage, he actually goes for the dragon tail, which is actually quite strange. Uh, as he goes ahead and knocks me uh, out on the f out of the field and knocks in uh, who was it that was brought in? Actually brings in my Nidoqueen, queen, which I was completely okay with because uh, this thing had thunderbolt. While I did fear the um, while I did fear the miracle, I figured that he he would have swapped knowing that I carried thunderbolt. But he actually goes ahead and stays in here. Uh, Thunderbolt's gonna come off, do a cr crazy amount of damage, bringing him just around about 40% as he goes ahead and scalds me, ends up actually picking up the burn, and we're both actually sitting around 40%, but knowing that I'm Scarf now, or more so, he doesn't know I'm Scarf, but seeing that damage, he doesn't want to leave his Blastoise in on the field, so I believe he uh, goes ahead and swaps out into the Cryogonal next, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he switches into the Cryogonal. Uh, it's going to take 25% to those rocks and eat up uh, a, a Thunderbolt because I am choice. Uh, once again, I would have liked to click fo Flamethrower on this thing. But with its high special defense, you know, uh, Cryogonal's actually eating that kind of like a champ. Just sitting right above, or right below 50%, I should say. Uh, but realizing this was an excellent opportunity, I go ahead, I send in my Fortress, my Walnut, to be knocked out by this thing. So I can have a safe switch into my Entei because Entei uh, clicking E speed could actually knock this thing out, which was really, really nice. Uh, and I didn't have to risk, you know, going for the Sacred Fire on the Blastoise switching or anything. I could just click Sacred Fire. I mean, I'm not Sacred Fire, the Extreme Speed, the Extreme Speed. <laughs> And this is where the craziness starts to happen, ladies and gentlemen. He goes ahead and swaps out into his Blastoise, and I'm going for that Sacred Fire. He takes the Rock's damage. I'm going to go ahead and hit this Extreme Speed. And this damage that a Banded Entei can do is one of the reasons why I love this Pokemon so much. We almost get the knockout, but you know what? Because I am Banded, we are locked into E-Speed. And so I'm going to go ahead and just click E-Speed again, and, and Entei's going to pick up the knockout against this Blastoise. So already we are sitting very, very nicely. Uh, he then sends in the Terrakion. Terrakion is taking rocks damage. And those rocks came in so clutch, ladies and gentlemen, because I looked up the calc and the e, the e speed damage was like 22 to 26%. And in the red, I knew I guaranteed the knockout. So rocks coming in clutch. Entei gets a second E speed knockout. Up next comes in the uh, Thunderous on his side of the field. It takes 25% rocks. It's sitting below 50%. E speed to this thing does minimum 50%. So the E-Speed goes off, and Entei gets a third E-Speed knockout. I'm thinking on my end with this battle, what is going on? Is this really going to happen? And then the Victini comes in, and I'm thinking, okay, the fun is over. The fun is over. I can get one more E-Speed off. This thing's just going to obliterate me. So I go for the E-Speed uh, after it takes the Rocks damage. I'm like, dang it, another one would have knocked it out. Matt goes and goes for the uh, Inferno uh, Overdrive. Z move and what happens next I cannot believe ladies and gentlemen from this craziness that this Victini is this Inferno Overdrive attacks us and Entei is standing strong ladies and gentlemen Entei is standing in the fire because he barks and volcanoes erupt 
He lives it! The E-Speed comes up and he knocks out the Victini! The only Pokemon that is left is the Cryogonal. And ladies and gentlemen, after the rocks and one more E-Speed, Entei swept through Matt's team. He picked up our 4-0. Oh, he got a 5 Pokemon sweep. And oh my gosh, I've never had a sweep like this before. I, I don't think I've ever had a sweep like this before. And we are sitting currently... We are sitting at 3 and 5, ladies and gentlemen. Our record still is not the best, no. But we, I was, I'm looking forward to our next battles, and we have a wonderful opportunity to still make the playoffs. So if you guys want to support the Salt Lake City Swampers in their climb to make the playoffs for the LDL Season 5, definitely uh, leave a thumbs up for your thumb, brother. And if you want to see more content like this, body slam that subscribe button. But I'm going to get up out of here. I got to go calm down. My voice is starting to hurt from all this screaming. <laughs> Woo, this battle was awesome, but my name is Sunbrother to you guys, and I'll see you in the next episode.